All right. So say you are on your part two or part three of your exam. See a question highlighting this equation saying, what is this? What are the requirements that are needed? And what are the components and variables? Then name the second equation down here. What are the requirements and components of it? And what is the energy of delta? So first thing, you need to know that this is the Bragg-Gray theory. So the requirements here. So it requires CPE or transient CPE, and that's charge particle equilibrium. All electrons arise from phantom material, a small cavity. So you need a small cavity that will not perturb the secondary electron spectrum. This neglects delta rays, that is, electrons that cause ionizations themselves created in the cavity. And it also requires energy of secondary electrons to be deposited in the cavity, implying a large cavity. Understand that this is unrealistic because now the Bragg Gray theory tells us that we need both a large and a small cavity so that you can't have that, which is one of the issues with the Bragg Gray theory here. So now where are the components? So S over rho, that is the mass collisional stopping power. D med here is the dose in medium with the chamber. And then D gas is the dose in the gas of the chamber. Now, what is the second equation? This is the Spencer Attucks cavity theory. Now, what are its requirements? So we still need CPE or transient CPE. Now, slow electrons, which are below a energy uh, that is they call it, it's the delta symbol. So delta is the cutoff energy. So slow electrons deposit energy where they're created. Fast electrons, which are greater than this delta, which signify delta rays, dissipate energy via the continuous slow down approximation. So this requires a small cavity to avoid permutations and the non-practical large cavity requirement is avoided because of the use of the restricted stopping power. So here we need a small cavity and I'm not gonna write it to confuse you, but it does not require that we have a large cavity. So this makes much more sense and is actually doable tangibly and clinically. So describe the components. So L, this L over rho, that is the restricted mass collisional stopping power. So this splits secondary electrons into two groups via this delta, and that corresponds to the energy required for electrons to just cross the cavity. And then finally, what is the energy of that delta while we're talking about it? So in the Spencer Attucks theory, delta here, delta is equal to 10 to 20 keV. Anything less than this delta, anything less than this threshold assumes that the electrons release their energy close to the site. So that is why Spencer Attucks is what we use it only requires a small cavity, and it doesn't have that unrealistic expectation that Bragg-Gray theory has. So understand Bragg-Gray theory and Spencer Attucks, why it's important. Know that this is the foundation of TG51. Now, yeah, we have a bunch of extra correction factors and things in TG51, but ultimately, this is what everything is based off of. So it's very important to understand that fact, understand Bragg Gray, how this equation works and why it's important. So if you have any questions, comment below. I'll happily help where I can. Best of luck studying and good luck in part three.